we're in the last part, H, conclusions. A few other remarks about about jobs and why this course might could be useful. And this is the Big Data Application Analytics course, and this is the overview section. And I'm Jeffrey Fox, and I'm recording this, this uh, overview. All right, so I already told you the role of this class. At the very least, whatever you do, you should be digitally savvy. You don't have to build deep learning networks to succeed. You don't have to write uh, 100,000 cloud, uh, cloud native uh, lines of um, Java or what have you. Uh, but uh, you need to be digitally savvy. So as we go into this AI cloud edge revolution, you will know how to take advantage of it. And you can get other people to write your software and, do it and run the machine learning, but um, you can therefore be a domain expert, a data scientist, a data engineer, a software engineer. And all of these can be equally successful or more successful. Probably the domain expert might be the most successful. But you must be digitally savvy. You must know enough about what's going on to make good decisions. So, so that's the purpose of this course. And uh, just a little discussion about a field which is underestimated, data engineering which I try to encourage IU to pursue unsuccessfully. And um, if you look at data science teams, we have data scientists. Now we have this really interesting concept of a citizen data scientist. This, by the way, comes from Mark Gartner, who we did a look to some other things from Gartner in the past, and earlier in this, this overview, the hype cycles. Citizen data scientists are the main experts who get converted into data scientists. And they are the ones which we used to call decision makers in the data science program. Um, and that's interesting. There are they, Gardner was very positive about this concept because it's they're just it's actually probably cheaper to convert domain domain experts into data scientists and to train data scientists. And the advantage is all of this stuff is domain specific. It's not pure AI. Well, if you're working for a, I don't know, hippopotamus tracking company in, in Timbuktu, you would you will need to be an expert on hippopotami. And then you need to be an expert on the machine learning which will analyze the sensors which have tracked the hippopotami. So the main expertise is essential. And uh, that's possibly equally important to running the machine learning. Then we have this data engineering, and that is sort of needed by the fact that all of this pre-processing. There is the glamorous running of your convolutional neural net or the running of the of the transformer network that interprets your speech. That's glamorous. That's the deep learning, the final PyTorch or TensorFlow Jaguar. However, that data had to be cleaned up and processed and run through all sorts of programs. And like in the case when I did particle physics experiments, it took us six months to analyze to get the data engineering step done. And in fact, if you were a PhD in particle physics experiment, you spent six years solely working on the engineering part of it, building the apparatus, testing it. Man, uh, Manning or womaning the shifts which took the data. And then you spent a, a, a couple of months analyzing the final data using well known techniques to discover the Higgs boson or whatever you were discovering. And then we have the experts on the business and we have the software engineer, we have the quant geeks who are the physicists who are really know uh, the, some really important aspects of the machine learning. And then we have the total experts on everything, the unicorns. Actually, people can be unicorns and companies can be unicorns, but it's good to be a unicorn. They're the things who are really cleaning up. Last but one slide. So here are some overall con conclusions. Big data is the data-driven method, which is what you have to understand. Why is it that the data will tell you the answer? And how do we get the answer from the data and position ourselves to, to make the next steps? We should all, we should just, clouds are not to be questioned, at least in the near future. They can still change, things will go back and forth. So I'm not saying clouds will be dominant 50 years from now, but clouds are here today 
And I doubt if that world, they might be renamed as hippopotami, but they're still going to be roughly what they are for the next five years. They'll just get more of them, and they'll get more powerful, and they'll get easier to use. But they'll be clouds. And then we have to do these data intensive studies, and that's going to work in business, which will drive the, a lot of the innovation, because there's so much money and importance there. And research, previously, the computer science innovations often came from applying computer science to research. Now I think most innovations is coming from applying computer science to business, because there's so much more work of that type going on, and it has to be leading edge. Because as I said, if Microsoft is 2% better than Facebook at something in the way they're both where they're competing, Microsoft will gain billions of dollars. So it's worth investing. And then we're doing data analytics, which makes everything an optimization problem in some funny space. And we solve that optimization problem with deep learning. We have lots and lots of employment opportunities. Maybe it will, that will actually, maybe in, the, in some areas, turn down. Because uh, in some of core areas, we probably don't need more people. Uh, in some areas, like uh, data engineering of, of um, tr tracking hippopotami, probably that's going to grow. Because there's so many of those, uh, that's the long tail of uh, of data science, that long tail of data science of lots of jo lots of different applications where you're applying the data-driven approach, that's going to grow. And uh, say you can go to these big companies where eventually they'll, I think they'll stop hiring so many people. You have big manufacturing companies, which are big applications, and you have startups, and you have all these transformed industries. And the students who will succeed are the ones who are digital and data savvy. They're flexible and able to accommodate changes. And they need to be aware of these technology and opportunities were changing very rapidly. But they have the same flavor of data driven, data oriented, and using digital infrastructure and things like that. And finally, this when I first started in 2013 was my sort of mantra. The big data ecosystem, which was using clouds, running data analytics collaboratively, processing big data and solving problems in X informatics, and then education in data science. So that's not so far off, but it's still true. But its emphasis is now slightly different because of deep learning and the edge, which we didn't have in those days. I actually went online and tried to find how many informatics fields there were. And I identified all these ones which are actually available online. There's informatics and astronomy, biology, biomedicine, business, chemistry, climate, crisis, health science, energy, environment, finance, health, intelligence, informatics, lifestyle informatics, marketing informatics, medicine informatics, pathology informatics, policy informatics, radar informatics, security informatics, sensor informatics, social informatics, sustainability informatics, wealth and wellness informatics. And there's some fields I never actually found it defined, like physics. Obviously, physics is doing informatics. When you analyze that Higgs boson, all of that stuff, infrastructure is informatics. And we have, it certainly still expands industry and science. So we weren't so far off in 2013. And uh, actually, this particular list is probably after 2013. But it was probably fixed in 2015. It, it was just, uh, I just looked at more web pages from 2013 to 2015. But anyway, here we are, deep learning version of this course, and we're trying to become digitally savvy. Lots of best of luck and get going on the course. Thank you.